Congress will be the Summer Olympic Games, and in five years will be the International Congress of Mathematics. So get back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's the best okay, team. <laughs> okay, thank you, Flavio. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers, uh, Boyan and Eduardo, for the invitation to give this talk today. Uh, I'm very happy to be back at IMPA. I graduated here in 2008, and every time that I came here, I feel very happy. I, I met a lot of friends. I make new friends. It's very nice to, to be here. So <clears throat> today um, I'm going to talk about the generalized KDV equation. Uh, out my my main, main idea here is to give you a, a, a survey of the, the available results for this equation and also the relevant open problems on this area. Okay, uh, I'll try to avoid uh, technical proofs, and see, I just want to mention the results and the open problems. So, uh, we're going to start first with the KDV equation. The KDV equation is this equation here. It's very famous in fluid mechanics. And this equation was derived, derived by Gottweg and de Vries in 1895. And I also put a picture of the Businesk here because we have an interesting uh, historical remark here because actually Businesk first derived this equation uh, some 20 years before Cordovac and de Vries, but it, it was in a footnote of a 400 page book, so <laughs> nobody paid too much attention. And then uh, Cordovac and de Vries rediscovered this equation uh, some, some years. Uh, after that. Okay, so, and this is the, the KDV equation. Uh, there are a lot of physical applications of this equation, and, but actually today I'm going to talk about the generalized KDV equation, which is we replace the power 2 on the nonlinearity by any power greater than or equal than 5. Okay? Uh, turn off the light? Maybe here? Is it good? Better? I think it can turn more? More one? One career? No. Can you say? Maybe, but it's not very important. It's better, right? Okay, so, but actually, today we are going to talk about the generalized KDV, which is the, the same equation, but we replace the power on the nonlinearity by some power greater than or equal than 5, okay, k plus 1. So, from the physical point of view, we only, as far as I know, uh, we only have physical applications for the case k equal 1 and k equal 2. k equal 1 is the KDV equation. K equal to, with, oh, I mean, with power 3 here, we have the, we, what we call the modified KDV equation. But after that, as far as I know, I don't know any physical applications of that. Okay? But from the mathematical point of view, it's very relevant to study these kind of powers too, these other powers. So uh, my first remark here is the case K equal 4 is the critical KD, JKDV equation. I will come back. I will explain why. 
k equal 4 is the critical one. And uh, every time that I mention a result here, I'll try to compare with the available results for the critical case, okay? We are, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to generalize the results for the critical case for the uh, b uh, bigger k, okay? So, uh, so first, the, the first question that we, we can consider is what is the solution of this equation? So, well, in dispersive models, what we can do, what we usually do is, well, first we consider the linear equation and take the Fourier transform. And since we are taking the Fourier transform, we know that the uh, derivatives uh, becomes a, a multiplication by polynomial, right? And then you can solve an ODE in the Fourier variables, and then you come back to, to the original variables and have a solution for at least for the linear part, okay? So uh, doing this, uh, the evolution of the linear part, I mean the evolution of this equation with this initial data is given by this guy here, where hat here means the Fourier transform and the upside down hat is the inverse Fourier transform, okay? So this is very easy to solve the linear equation, just uh, solve a simple ODE. And then uh, we see that if we take the natural Sobolev spaces, it's very easy to see since uh, the modulus of this complex number is always one, that the norm HS is preserved by the linear part of the equation. So it's very natural to consider solutions on Sobolev spaces HS, okay? This is uh, what we do here. So we are trying to find solutions in, in, in Sobolev space HS. But first, we need also to, to, to have a, a, a hint about uh, what is the range of S we can expect solution. And this is we can, we can do, uh, ah, first, uh, first before that, uh, I'm gonna mention what, we, what is the solution for the nonlinear part, I mean, for the nonlinear solution. So to do this, we use the Duhamel principle. And using the Duhamel principle, we have that the solution is given by the linear evolution plus some term. So this is the integral term associated to the nonlinear part. Okay. So for us, a solution of the equation will be a UT such that satisfies this equality here, three. Okay. Note that the U appears in the left-hand side and also in the right-hand side. Okay. So. Uh, a natural way to find a solution is uh, that the idea is very simple. We need to, we just define an operator, phi of u, such that phi of u for each t is the right hand side of the, 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 the equality I showed you before. So what we have to do is just to find a u such that phi of u is equal u, I mean a fixed point. So a natural way to find a, a, a fixed point is first, uh, we try to find a closed set on this space here, such that this application phi is a contraction and well-defined, okay, for some t. And if we can do that, then we have at least local solutions on this space, okay? So this is the, the, the main idea. So the difficult part here is, uh, how to find this space xk such that this operator is well defined and is a contraction. This is the, the hard part, okay? And as I, I was telling to you before, we, we cannot expect that the solutions, we have solutions in, in every HS. We need to have a hint of what is the range of S such that we have a solution. Note that if you decrease the S, we are, uh, in the, the, the HS is growing, right? And then what we want to do is to find the, the lowest uh, index S such that we have local opposency. This is the better thing to do. And if you are lucky, you can also prove that below this index we have u opposeness, okay? And then you, you close the, the well opposeness related to at least the local problem related to this equation. So what is the scaling prediction? The scaling prediction is very simple. Well, we use the scaling properties of the equation and you can see that if u is a solution, this, sorry, this uh, u lambda is also a solution where we rescale the solution. 
And we compute the H1, the HS uh, dot norm of this. The H1, the HS dot is just HS, but we omit this, ter this one here. Okay, we just put the weight X uh, uh, Xi to the power 2S, okay? So this is the, uh, the homogeneous sobolev spaces, which we denote by putting on dot. So if we compute this, we have this relation just using uh, properties of the Fourier transforms and so on. And then what we can expect is, okay, you can have, uh, at least we can expect to have local opposeness if this power here is positive, okay? So this is the heuristic derivation of the range of S we are interested in, okay? So this is not our, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, a proof, of course, uh, we, we, all, we, we, we need to prove this, but we can expect that we have local solutions at least when this power is positive. So the solution space we are looking for is that this, we, with S greater than or equal than one half minus two over K, okay? So this power here is positive. And from, from now on, we, we're gonna call this number here by SK, okay? <clears throat> so, two remarks here. The first remark is that, okay, take k equal four and put this here. So we have one half minus one half, which is zero. So we are in the H zero. And of course, H zero is L2, okay, by the properties of the Fourier transform. And then a good, a better name for this equation will be when k equal four is the L2 critical JKDV equation. So sometimes we omit this term L2. So that's why we call it critical. And also note that if we are considering K bigger than four, then we have that this SK is always between zero and one half, okay? So this means that we are always dealing with the L2 supercritical case because we are <clears throat> above L2 and then H1 subcritical case because we are always below one. Okay, this is, will be interesting in <coughs> when we consider global solutions. <coughs> okay, so, uh, so uh, the classical result in this direction uh, is, is the following, the, the result of the Kenny Ponce Vega in 1993, and they actually proved that we have local solutions in that space we have predicted using the scaly uh, prediction, okay? So they prove the following. If k is bigger and equal to four, and sk is as before, then we have solution. If we consider, remember that space x, k, which is the space that, that the operator is well-defined and, and is a contraction, then uh, the sk for them is the combination of these three spaces here. Okay, so this is the first one, second one, and third one. Note that this, this space three is very complicated because it has a derivative in x, a derivative in time, and also this alpha k and beta k, which is uh, some, we need to do some computation to know the, the, actual, the actual value of this spaces. But note, uh, a good remark here is that, okay, think about the case k equal four, in the, which is the critical case. The k equal four, we have sk zero. Then we don't have derivatives in, in x here, just this derivative. This is also, uh, no, we have, don't have this derivative. And if we compute k equal four here, we have that alpha is zero, beta is zero, and pk is five, and qk is 10. So in the case k equal four, the norm two and three are equal. Okay, this is interesting. So in some sense, this is a, just a generalization of this in some direction, okay? So I have some remarks concerning this theorem. First, uh, actually they prove that, the, in their proof, it's easy to see that the time of existence depends on the norm of initial data if k is bigger than four. I mean, if you are not in the critical case. In the critical case, the time of existence depends on the initial data itself and not only on, on its norm, okay? So another corollary is that, okay, since we have local 
existence in SK, you can prove that you have local existence in SK in S, in S for every S bigger than SK. Okay, this is not very difficult to obtain. Uh, this is already the, the, the comment I made before, that the two norms are, are actually the same in the case, in the critical case, k equal four. And uh, this is also very important, that this result is sharp. It's sharp in the sense of this theorem uh, proved by Bernier, Koenig, Ponce, Vincent, and Vega in 1996. And they prove that, okay, if you are not, if you are below this guy here, or on this guy here, uh, you cannot express the time of existence in terms of the norm of the initial date. And this is the, the eu Posner sense they are using this. And, and that's why we, we say that this result is sharp, okay? Because below this SK, we, don't, we cannot have uh, a good local well Posner's theorem, okay? These are the comments. And I wanna say some words about uh, this norm here in particular. This norm here is a little bit complicated because we are, if we are in the case k bigger than four. Uh, because we also, uh, we, are, we already have some derivative in x that appears in this norm, in this norm, but we also have derivative in t, which is not uh, very easy to handle because if you consider, for example, uh, <clears throat> what we call the time oscillating uh, uh, jkdv, which is exactly the same equation, but here we put some functions that depends of t in front of the nonlinearity, okay? This is what we call the time oscillation, jkdv. And usually the assumption we, we want to put on this h is that it only, only belongs to L infinite. We, we don't want to assume any, <coughs> any uh, that a, h is, well, has some derivative, derivative in some space. We just need to assume that this is infinite. So if you are trying to prove uh, local opposeness for this equation using the previous theorem, we are going to have a, a, a problem here. Because there we, we, we need to consider some derivative in time. And we don't want to assume uh, that H has some derivative in time. So <coughs> this, uh, this equation, <coughs> I'm sorry, this equation, uh, was considered by, by three authors here, uh, uh, Xavier Cavajal, Mahendra Panti, and Marcia Cialon, 2011 and 2013. And they proved, uh, actually, they are interested in, in not only local solutions for this equation, but they, they want to, to, to study some limits between this equation and the, the original one. But to do these limits, they, they need to at least prove that the equation is local opposed in certain space. For, for, for instance, in H1 space. So H1 was uh, enough for them. And they, they proved the following. For the critical case, they have that uh, local opposed for S in this range. And for the supercritical case, they proved that uh, local opposing with S equal one, okay? Of course, they, they, they cannot use the kenning ponce vega theorem because of this derivative in time here in the supercritical case, <coughs> since they are assuming that the, the time oscillating potential is only in L infinity, okay? So, <clears throat> in a joint work with uh, Adermi Pastor in 2000, actually, this, was, this paper was published this year, uh, so 2013, and we, 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 we prove an alternative result for this local opposeness, the, cl the classical result, the kenning ponce vega result. What we could prove is that, okay, we can replace this norm, okay, this derivative in time norm, with, which has derivative in time norm, by this norm here, which is very simple. It's a Lebesgue norm as, as usual. So, uh, and this is very interesting, very interesting because okay, we have some remarks here, is that take the case as usual, let's compare with the case, the critical case, or, I mean k equal four. Then this norm here is, is exactly this norm. Three, uh, these two norms are the same. And also, and not the same with the, the, the norm that is already in the theorem. So uh, 
we can think that, okay, we are, for the case k big and 4, we are going to another generalization, uh, to another direction. So Kenny Posevega went to some direction and went to another direction. Okay, but for the critical case, we all are in the same place. Okay, so this is just a, 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 a comment. And of course, using this, so we don't need to care more about the derivative in time. Uh, some derivative in time in the proof and then you can also apply the, the classical result and see that the time oscillating JKDV is local well posed in HS for S bigger than or equal than SK. Since we don't need to, to, to use more derivatives, we just need to assume the function in L infinity, we have this color area for free of this result. <clears throat> so this is a nice point. And I wanna mention the main tool to prove this result and the main tool to prove this result is what we call the ref refined threshold estimate, okay? So what we have here is that we have a gain of two over uh, 3K in the right hand, in the left hand side, but then we need to put some weight here, some derivative here, which is related to the critical space, okay? And so this is the, the the estimate we, we have proved in this paper, and with this estimate, we can prove the local result. And again, we can compare this estimate with the case k equal four, okay? And for the case k equal four, this is a classical estimate. If we compute this here, this is gonna be one over six, six, six. <coughs> so this is the classic, uh, the classic estimate proved by Kenny Ponsevegi in 1991. Also, we are generalized this uh, estimate for the supercritical case, okay? So, uh, what we can do now is, since we have this estimate, we can ask ourselves about uh, what is the best constant for this, for this uh, inequality? And is there, is there a, 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 a minimizer of these, this inequality? I mean, there is some function that this inequality holds with equality. So this is the question we can put here if we defi define as this guy here as the sub of this guy, uh, assuming that, I mean, so the sub of the left hand side, assuming that the right hand side is one, of course. So this is uh, the best constant and we can ask ourselves about the the value of S, this best content, and the function that realizes the equality. So this is, uh, a lot of people is, is doing this right now in, for the dispersive equations and the constant of dispersive equations using concentration compacting techniques and so on. Uh, so for the case K equal four, we already have a result proved by Xiao in 2009 and he proved some sort of dichotomy result here. I mean, he could prove that the, the, there exists a max, uh, a, uh, he, he could compute the best value of X assuming another, another hypothesis, okay? So without assuming this hypothesis, then he cannot prove, but uh, the, the existence of, uh, I mean, uh, the existence of a function satisfying this equality, but he could prove something, something else. So that's what we call the dichotomy result. And uh, I wanna say that for the case k bigger than four, this is completely open. So we don't know the best constant and also we don't know any function that satisfies this relation here, okay? So it's gonna be nice to study this problem. Uh, okay, now I'm, I'm gonna talk about, uh, okay, since we have already have Local solutions, I wanna say some words about global solutions for this equation and the available results and uh, what are the, the, the interesting open problems in this area too. So we are considering uh, global well poses in H1, okay? In the energy space. So, so let's recall the, 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 the equation here. Remember that this mu here is or minus one or one, okay? So we're gonna see that there is some difference between these two, these two models when we, we change the sign here. 
So for this equation, we have at least two conserved quantities. That is the mass, I mean, the L2 norm of the, the evolution is preserved. And we also have uh, the, the energy, which is a combination of the, the L2 norm of the derivative of the solution and also uh, some LP norm here, okay? So this is the energy, so note that if a solution is in H1, we have the right to compute this uh, quantity here because this guy is not infinite and also we, we can use, a, for example, a galliard and Nirenberg inequality to prove that this is also finite if we are in H1. Okay, so if you are in H1, this quantity is uh, finite and then you can compute this and you know that for the every time this quantity is preserved. Okay, so this is the the energy we call the energy. <clears throat> so first, uh, I want to say some words about the difference between this when we consider uh, the change of signs here. So first consider k equal uh, mu equal minus 1 and k even, okay? So in this case, you have that this quantity here is positive. So this is the quantity that appears, the second quantity that appears in the energy. So if this is positive, so the energy is a bound for the growth of this norm, right? And since we have that the L2 norm is also preserved, you can prove that the, in fact the H1 norm is bounded. And since the H1 norm is bounded by, uh, oh, sorry, there's a typo here, it should be two, the energy of the time, the initial data. So uh, since we have that, uh, we have an a priori estimate for the H1 norm, we can say that from, from our local result, remember that the time of existence depends on the norm of the initial data. And here we are bounded the norm of the, of the solution, the H1 norm. So we can continue this, the solution and show that, in fact, we have global well poses in H1, okay? So this is very easy, it's a very simple case because we are assuming uh, <coughs> two hypotheses that make this quantity positive, okay? So <clears throat> another cor corollary is the following. Uh, okay, now consider the case mu equal one and the critical case. So what you can say about the solution? Because now it's a little bit more complicated because we don't have that this solution this, this quantity here is positive. So we have that this is, this is something, this is something, but this can grow and this can grow too, such that the difference remains uh, constant. So the case is a little more complicated, and, but at least for the critical, the critical case, uh, Kenny Poncevega uh, proved the following, that we have, local, we have global solutions if your initial data is small is small in which sense is uh, the norm of the initial data, the L2 norm of the initial data is uh, less than the L2 norm of Q, okay? Where Q is a solution of a, a, a elliptic equation given here, okay? So this is the point, and this is not very difficult to prove because, okay, we can use the sharp galliard nirenberg inequality, as I mentioned to you, so we can bound the L6 norm by a combination of the L2 norm of the derivative and the L2 norm of the solution with some k, with some constant, which is the optimal one, is given by three over this norm here, where this k is the solution of this equation. So we use this inequality and we obtain this other inequality here, that the energy is a bound for this, the multiplication of these two terms, okay? And okay, so if you want to bound this, we just need to, 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 to prove or, or, or to assume that this guy here is positive. Because if this guy is positive, we, we can pass to the other side of inequality without changing the, the, the signs. And then we have a bound for this term. So this guy is positive when, of course, when this quantity here is less than one, or, or in other words, with when the L2 norm of initial data 
is less than add to norm of Q. Okay, so this is very simple. And this was already proved by, by Kenny Ponce Vega. And also, we, we, we can, uh, they also prove the following. Uh, okay, if you are not in the critical case, if, if you are in the case K bigger, bigger than four, then you also have local global solutions, okay, uh, provide that the initial data is small. So this is what they prove. And uh, okay, the, the proof is not very difficult. In fact, it's almost this, the, the same idea. So if we use, okay, you also have a Galeado Nirenberg inequality in, the, in this contest. In, instead of L6 norm, we have power bigger than six. Then we, you, you use this inequality and obtain this other inequality here, where xk is given by this. So actually, note that we have a, if we try to make the graph of this function here, f epsilon one minus some constant, one plus epsilon. So we have that the L2 norm must be, uh, I mean, the L2 norm of the derivative of the solution must be in this line here, okay? So, but if you are small, your initial data is small, your energy is like here. So here is the, this guy. So since we are small, we can only, this guy must be here or here, okay? Because uh, if we compute uh, this guy using this function, we know that this always be below this, this level here. So we have just two options for where this guy lives. But of course, if you are assuming that the data is small, so in the beginning you, you are here, also in that region. So you, you cannot be here at some point because if you, if after some, 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 some time you are here, so at some point you was here, you were here. So since we are here, you cannot go up this level, okay? So this is uh, also not very difficult uh, proof. So, but the main point here is that, okay, what do you mean by small? Can you quantify this? And uh, before that question, I want to say that actually the proof, at least for the critical case, was first given by uh, Weinstein in 1983, and he proved uh, uh, the galeado nirenberg inequality for the, the generalized case. Uh, Nagy also, also proved in dimension one. So, in, but in this paper, he considered only the critical NLS equation. Okay, he don't he. He didn't consider the KDV, of course, because the local opposeness of the KDV was not already being established at this point, okay? Uh, so uh, this is the question I wanna make to you, is what is the precise meaning of small in the case K bigger than four? Can you quantify this? And this is a, is a joint work with Felipe Linares and Ademir Pastor. And we proved the following, yes, you can, you can quantify the, 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 small, the, the word small. And we proved the following, if, if you take initial data such that this relation is satisfied and also this relation is satisfied, then you have global solutions. And these relations must be true for every time. Okay, so this is our result. But I mean, it's a, a lot of index here, but it's nice if we, if we compare with the case k equal four. So take k equal four, then of course, sk is zero. Since sk is zero, this term here is one, and also we don't have this term here, and we have just the mass of u zero must be below the mass of q. This is already the, 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 the result here in the critical case, okay? So in some sense, we are generalizing this result. Oh, and also, so, and also the, the other assumption here, take S equal 
k equal 4, s k 0, then also we don't have this guy here with derivative, and we have also the mass of q 0 must be below the mass of q. Okay. So actually in the case k, k equal 4, these two relations are the same. Okay. But we, we, if you consider uh, the k bigger than 4, so we have a, a little more uh, work to do. And you can say that the solution exists for all times if we assume. So this is the, the, the meaning of the small. Okay? You need to take initial data such that if you compute this guy and this guy, this must be below this, quantity, this, this number here and below this number here. This is the precise meaning of the small. So, and of course, you can ask, or you, you can ask, okay, this smallest assumption is really necessary. I mean, can you show that uh, you have uh, blow-up solutions if you are uh, above this level? So, <clears throat> this in, for the case k equal four, yes, it, it was proved by Martel and Mel in 2002, and they proved that okay, for the critical case, there exists uh, uh, initial data such that you are above from, from the L2 norm of Q and you have blow up. Which, what do you mean by blow up? That the, uh, the norm of the derivative blows up. Okay, so actually also, uh, of course, blow up in H1 means that the H1 norm blows up, right? But you already know that the mass is conserved, so the L2 norm is conserved. So you, you just need to care about the blow up of the, 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 the norm, the L2 norm of the derivative. So that's what they did here. And for the k, k bigger than four, this is completely open. So actually the problem is that, okay, if we start with initial data, satisfying this, but satisfying this inequality with the other sign here, can you find global solutions? So this is the, 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 the open question, and it seems to be very, a very hard problem to prove this. Uh, okay, so now I'm, I want to say some, something about, okay, global solutions, but with S in HS, but with S less than one, okay? Because why this is interesting? Because, okay, remember the energy. So I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that mu is minus one and k is even, because just to make this guy here always positive, okay? So I don't care about this guy, and to control this guy, I just need to control the energy, because the energy is a bound for this guy here, since this guy is positive, okay? So this only technical. Uh, assumptions and okay what is the the difficult here when you consider s less than one if you are in the in the hs uh, with okay below the energy space so you don't have that this quantity is finite anymore so we can only only say that this quantity is finite if the the function belongs to h1 okay so if you are below than one, you cannot say that. So there are a little, uh, a lot of results in this direction for this kind of, of result, global existence in this uh, uh, less regular spaces. And <clears throat> well, the available results for the case, for, for the critical cases the are the following. In, oh, this is all for the, crit the case, the critical case, okay? So the first result was proved by Fonseca, Linares, and Ponce in 2003. And they proved that, uh, okay, you have global solutions if S is bigger than three over four, okay? And they use, they use a, an idea introduced by Burgain where they deco decompose the initial data into frequencies and try to understand what happened with all the, the two solutions. And uh, for the, in 2010, I proved that Okay, we can improve this a little bit, that, and you can say that actually you have global result for S bigger than three over five. Okay, so we down a little bit, and also in 2010, this 2010, these four guys here. Okay, uh, the main idea in this paper, 
is the, what we call the I method, which is uh, introduced by Koliande, Kel, Stafelani, Takaoka, and Tao. And this is uh, an improvement of the Burgan method, and uh, I use this idea to, to prove uh, this result here, okay? Uh, and then in, in the same year, uh, Miao, Xiao, Fu, Xu, they proved that, uh, okay, you, you, you can improve this a little more and say that you have global solutions uh, for S bigger than 6 over 13. And this is very relevant, this result here is very important because it is the first time that you are below one half, okay? So note that this is not below one half, this is not below one half, and this is below one half. Because this is a, a, a great improvement because they are not allowed to use Sobolev embedding here. I use a lot Sobolev embedding in this term, and then when they, they try to improve, they, they are not allowing to do that. Okay, so they use other techniques, okay? So this is very relevant. And uh, for the supercritical case, we also have a result uh, uh, in a joint work again with Linares and Pasteur in 2011. And we prove that uh, we have global opposants for S bigger than this index here. And if you see, this is also a generalization of the critical case because just take K equal four. So if you take k equal four here, then you will have three over five, okay? And three over five is exactly the result in 2010. So in some sense, we are generalizing the result for the supercritical case. Uh, we also have some bound for the growth of this norm here that depends on S and k, okay? Uh, and now I want to say something about scattering. What is the scattering? So uh, first, what, what is this? Uh, okay, in our result, we already have global solutions, okay? So you can ask yourselves that, okay, if, uh, what is the, the, the asymptotic behavior of this solution? And the best thing we can have is what we call scattering, I mean, we can say that, okay, in some sense, the global solutions behave like uh, the global solutions of the nonlinear problem behave like the global solutions of the linear problem, at least in the infinite, and not at some space, I mean, in H1 that we are working here. So this is what, what is saying in this uh, relation here, that, okay, if you take time goes to infinite and you compare the nonlinear evolution of the, the, the equation with uh, some linear solution, then if you take the, the H1 norm, this goes to zero, okay? So this is the, what we call scattering. And there are a lot of, a lot of work on this, on this problem. Uh, I wanna say something about for the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, there are at least three very important works. So, it was introduced uh, you know, by Kenny and Mel in 2006, and they proved scattering for the NLS using some sort of profile decomposition techniques or concentration compactness techniques. So this was the first time that this kind of techniques was used in the, concept, in the context of dispersive equations. So this is a very uh, remarkable paper. And then, and they, they deal, they, they, they studied the critical case, and then Dukayets, Homer, and Hondenkunde in 2008, they, they studied the, the uh, one specific uh, supercritical case, okay? And then Fung, Xi, and Kaznam in 2011, they proved uh, scattering for the whole range of L2 supercritical and H1 subcritical uh, NLS equation, okay? So, and now uh, this is a work in progress with uh, Felipe Linares and Andemir Pastor, and we are trying to prove scattering for the JKDV equation, okay? So what we have 
now is uh, the following characterization. Okay, what we, we need to have scattering at least. I mean, some uh, conditions here. Uh, what we, we prove is that, okay, take initial data in H1. And if you already know that uh, the soup of the H1 norm for all times is bounded, I mean, it's not going to infinite, and some other norm is bounded, then you have scattering. So remember, we, oh, uh, if, you, if you see, this norm is exactly the norm that uh, we introduced in the new proof for the local theorem. Remember when we, 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 we make a, we replace the norm with derivatives in time by some Lebesgue norm, and this is exactly this norm. So if we can prove that uh, this norm is bounded, then we have scattering. <laughs> so remember uh, also our result about global solutions here, that, okay, so what we are trying to do is, is the, the following. Assume that the initial data satisfy these two relations here, 12 and 13, okay? So if you, if you satisfy this, we already proved that the solution is global. But moreover, we proved that the H1 norm is bounded because you have this for all times. See? So the H1 norm is bounded since the, the, the L2 norm is preserved. So this is preserved and the, of course this is bounded by this. Okay? So if we are in this, uh, if we satisfy these two relations, we already have this, that the soup, the soup of the H1 norm is bounded. And then we just need to prove uh, that this like, Lebesgue norm here is bounded and then we have scattering. But this seems to be uh, a little difficult problem uh, using these concentration and compactness techniques and also some rigidity theorems. It's, uh, we, we are trying to do this right now. Okay, here we have some bibliography, the papers I mentioned, and thank you very much for your attention. Mm-hmm.